Okay, we're back. Last time, we found the gravitational potential energy stored in the Earth-Sun system, as well as the kinetic energy of the Earth as it moved around the Sun. And I said there was something interesting about the kinetic energy of the Earth and the gravitational potential energy stored in the Earth-Sun system. And if you look, you can see that the kinetic energy is almost exactly one-half of the gravitational potential energy. And where the gravitational potential energy is negative, this is positive. So it's negative, it's it's like taking the gravitational potential energy, multiplying by negative one-half, you get the kinetic energy. So, assuming that the Sun is stationary, let's find the total mechanical energy of the Earth-Sun system. Well, the total energy would be given by the kinetic energy plus the gravitational potential energy. Kinetic energy is 2, oops, excuse me, 2.65 times 10 to the 33rd joules plus, but it's negative, so we're just going to write minus 5.3 times 10 to the 33rd joules. And watch what happens if I combine those two. So 2.65 times 10 to the 33rd minus 5.3 times 10 to the 33rd. That's not a mistake. The total energy ends up being negative 2.65 times 10 to the 33rd joules. In other words, it's just the negative of the kinetic energy, or exactly one half of the gravitational potential energy. So that's really weird that it worked out like that. You might think, is there something special about the Earth and the Sun's relationship that these numbers always work out, that these numbers work out exactly the same? Turns out there's not. This will happen anytime you have um, something, uh, an, an object in orbit around something else in a circular orbit, assuming that the central object stays in place. And I'm going to show you why. Find the total energy for a satellite of mass M orbiting a planet of mass capital M in a circular orbit of radius R. Give your answer using only little m, big M, and R in any needed constants. So we're looking for the total energy. We're going to start this off just like we did last time. That's going to be equal to K plus UG. But now I'm going to write it all symbolically. I know kinetic energy is one-half MV squared, where M is the map as the little m, it's the mass of the satellite, minus the equation for gravitational potential energy is g little m big M over r. And again, last time we saw that the velocity was equal to, I probably should circle this up here, the square root of g times m over r. Again, if this was a real question derivation, I would make sure to fully show all my work, but right now I'm just going to kind of skip a step in the interest of saving time. One half m, let's see, square root g capital M over r, whole thing squared, minus g little m big M over r. If I take that, uh, if I square that term under the square root and combine, I'm left with this g little m big m over 2r minus g little m big m over r. And as we know, when we subtract, we need to have a common denominator in order to actually subtract. So I would need to multiply this by the bottom by 2 and the top by 2, and that will leave me with this, g little m big m over 2r. Actually, 2r is the entire denominator, so I can just do minus 2g little m big M. And I mean, g times little m times big M, let's just treat that as one term. Imagine that this was like x and this was minus 2x. What's x minus 2x? Well, it's negative x. So that means I'm left with negative g m big M over 2r is the total energy. Now, what did the kinetic energy end up being? The kinetic energy ended up being gm little m big m over 2r. And the gravitational potential energy was, as we know, negative gm big m over r. So you have the following relationships. The total energy in a system like this where some where a smaller body is in orbit around a stationary larger body in a circular orbit the total energy is equal to the negative of the kinetic energy 
the total energy is also said to be equal to half of the gravitational potential energy. And since both those things are equal to the total energy, we could also conclude that the negative of the kinetic energy equals half of the gravitational potential energy. And like I alluded to, this is a something that works anytime you have one object in circular orbit around another stationary object. This is known as what's called the Virial Theorem, V-I-R-I-A-L. And like I said, it is true for any circular orbit. Okay? Not something you, I guess, necessarily need to know, but it is kind of interesting. Okay? Let's move on. Let's actually talk about um, escape speed, one of my personal favorites, actually. Escape speed. Okay. So, this is the idea of how fast does something have to be moving in order to not stay in orbit anymore? How fast does something need to be moving in order to escape um, its gravitational bounds to some other larger object? So, for uh, to escape, we kept talking about bound orbits and bound orbits. We must have an object that is unbound. And we've always kept talking about if the energy is negative, then you have a bound system. It will eventually cause a closed orbit. The orbit will just keep repeating. However, if you have a total energy of greater than or equal to zero joules, then you'll have an unbound orbit. You'll either have something that will... Well, I don't want to get into the shapes right now. It's a little bit above what we have to do. Um, but you'll have something that does not necessarily come back around in an orbit. It might go near um, a, a large object, but it won't go back towards that object. Okay, It won't be trapped in a closed orbit. Okay, find the launch speed necessary for a 28,000 uh, kilogram rocket to escape Earth's gravity well. What a gravity well is, is the area, or the, it's the idea that gravity will pull the object back towards Earth. If you can escape the gravity well, that means that you have escaped the Earth's sphere of influence. If you're moving fast enough at certain points, then you will not get pulled back down to the Earth's surface. In order for this to happen, we know the total energy has to be greater than or equal to zero, and since the total energy is K plus UG, which ends up being one half mv squared minus g m big M over R, if this has to be greater than or equal to zero, then what if this is just what what if the okay, so the minimum that this would take to happen is the total energy being zero joules. Which means that you would have a situation where the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy are equal to one another. Now notice, this is we're not talking about any sort of orbit right here, because in an orbit this is not true. But we're just saying if we want something to <clears throat> escape from Earth, we need its kinetic energy to be equal to its gravitational potential energy. Oops, I've been, I miswrote that. In other words, kinetic energy equals gravitational potential energy. One half mv squared equals g m big M over r. We see we can cancel out the m's, and if we solve for v, that shows us that the equation for escape speed is 2 g m over r. Notice that there's no little m. As usual, it seems to have canceled out the escaping object's mass does not matter. And that's true regardless of if you want to launch a baseball into orbit, a golf ball, or a rocket ship. None of those masses matter. You just have to get the, ball, the object moving at a certain speed. And that speed is determined by the mass of the planet you're trying to escape from and how far away from that planet you are, the R. So, for Earth, to escape from the surface of Earth, we need the following. 2 times 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th newtons times meters squared over kilograms squared. Uh, let's see here. Mass of the Earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms and R, at the surface of Earth, 
6.37 times 10 to the sixth meters. We see that the escape speed for an object at Earth's surface is a little bit under 11,200 meters per second. That's how fast something has to be moving in order to leave Earth's surface and not fall back down to it. If you're going under that, you might get really far away, but you'll never get far enough away so that you don't fall back down to Earth's surface. Very interesting. Let's talk a little bit about orbital shapes and then we'll end with angular momentum. Hopefully we can get to it soon. Um, sketch a satellite in circular orbit around a, planet, or around a planet. Mark a point A where the satellite currently is. So let's say that our planet is here and here is our circular orbit. Let's see how good of a circle this is. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Let's say that this the satellite is right here. What would happen if the satellite began moving slightly faster than it currently is at point A? So here's the current or orbit. Okay, here's point A. And remember, with circular motion, there's a the reason that something's in circular motion is there's two kind of competing influences. There's a force and an acceleration that points towards the middle, and there's a tangential velocity that points perpendicular to that off to the side. And for a circle, for if it's in uniform circular motion, what that means is that there is a there's a speed at which you get a perfect circle. Imagine you started moving a little bit faster than you would for that perfect speed that causes circular motion. Well, what that would mean is that the acceleration isn't quite enough to keep it in a circle. If you're moving faster, you might travel a little bit farther out this way before you start getting pulled around. If you travel a little bit farther out this way, that means the gravity's, that gravity's influence on you is a little bit less. You're still in an orbit, but gravity's influence on you is a little bit less and you eventually make a wider orbit around this. So you're coming around. You're still getting pulled around, but very clearly this is not really a circle anymore. It really should be an oval, or an ellipse, actually. As you keep going, you get out here, and you're really far away from the planet, and that means, or the, yeah, the planet, since this is a satellite, that means your gravitational potential energy is really negative, which means you can't have as much kinetic energy anymore. So you're moving very slowly out here, the farther away you get, and you actually start to drift back inwards. And what'll happen is you'll come back and eventually you'll get right back to where you started. If you start moving faster, this is the conclusion, if you start moving faster at point A than you originally were, then what will happen is you will get you will your orbit will expand outward in the shape of an ellipse. And actually, this looks a little too, bit too circly. If it was real, probably more like this. Yeah, I like that. That looks better. Let's scrub out this first one. That's a little too circly for me. There we go. Okay, so look at that inward inner dotted line. The reverse happens if you start moving slower at that point. So here's the planet. Here's A. Imagine you start moving slower at this point than you meant to. If you start moving slower, then you're going to get pulled in towards the planet more. So your orbit will look more like this. Again, elliptical. But there are ways to change the orbit shape. There are ways to change the orbit shape by moving slower or faster at a certain point. You'll still return to the same point once your orbit is done, but moving faster will... Um, make your orbit your the distance that you go from the, the the distance that you go from the planet increase at certain points not at all points or well uh, not the same distance away at all points but it will increase how far away you are if you start going slower you'll move to an uh, elliptical orbit closer in towards the center of the circle okay so in this case we have something where you are less bound means you meaning you have a larger orbit. And note that you still return back to the same 
spot. With this orbital uh, maneuver, you are now more bound, meaning you have a smaller orbit. But again, you still return to the same spot. I'm going to stop there before we get to angular momentum. I'll take a few minutes to talk about that in the next video, and then we'll be done with the gravitation notes.